So today I want to talk to you about the danger of isolation. I'll tell you a little story. I grew up playing basketball. When I was young, I wanted to make it to the NBA. And during my time, I used to watch this guy called Allen Iverson. He was a monster. He could destroy on the court, but he only played ISO. So he would tell everybody, move to this side of the court and I'll do my play. And that's how I learned how to play basketball. Lesson, never pass the ball. That was the first time that I actually thought about isolation. You know, and the word isolation actually fascinates me. I don't know if you know this, but NASA, you know, the rocket ship things, they, they study the effects of isolation in the human body. They've run some studies uh, with scientists down in Antarctica. God knows what they were studying there. But they would be there for 12 months, 15 months, two years sometimes. And when they came back, some of them had a really hard time re-socializing. Some of them actually had PTSD because of isolation. Knowing what I know now, I actually have a hard time trying to understand why people choose to isolate when they're facing a problem. Some people choose to isolate because of shame. I've seen that. They think that what they've done is so hard, so impossible to understand that they don't want to share with family, friends, even church. And to be honest, we have gotten pretty bad at the art of listening. And because we are bad at listening, people got better at hiding. And here's the deal. If you hide your stuff, you know, people walk across you on the hallway at work and they will say the, you know, occasional, hello, how are you doing? And you go, yeah, it's all good. And we fake it, the, the famous, fake it until you make it. And the more we pretend that everything is okay, the more we prevent help from coming in. The reality is out there, there are so many people who are actually willing to help. Not everybody's after you. Not everyone is trying to pull the rug from under you. Not everyone wants the worst for you. Some people actually want the best for you. Now, I don't know why people would choose to isolate, but I'm pretty sure you and I, we all have been through some sort of isolation around the year 2020. When the pandemic hit, or the pandemic, I don't wanna get into details for that, but when they hit, we were told by the government, by the doctors, by every trusted source that isolation was safe. They would tell us on TV, radio, podcasts, YouTube, isolate, you know, it's better for you, it's better for the people around you. If you isolate, you heal faster. Now you fast forward three or four years, I'm not really sure if that was the whole truth. But the reality is we were told that isolation is safe. But isolation doesn't work for us. We're not an island. We human beings, we are made to be together. We are supposed to do life to together. <laughs> isolation doesn't work for us. Isolation actually works against us. There was some research uh, done during the pandemic and the results are just starting to come back. And there are so many statistics that I could share with you, but I'll just leave you with one. And it's a scary to think about this. One in every five people who actually develop anxiety, depression, anxiety, depression, and these sort of diseases because of behaviors that we learned during the pandemic. That's a scarier to think about that. The doctors will give you a few things to do, you know, go to the gym, exercise, find better friends, find a hobby. <laughs> I actually started a hobby. Someone told me to start a hobby and I decided to go mountain bike. And I discovered that in the mountains, the trees, they're actually dynamic. They pop up in the middle of the way and then all of a sudden you hit them and you don't realize that's, that's something you never knew that the, the trees were moving in the middle of the, the forest. Oh, dude. All of these things, they're superficial. They are superficial solutions to a really deep, in my opinion, a spiritual problem. I can tell you three things that happen when you isolate. Just three things. And I'm sure you can name many other ones, but three things. The first one is people get distracted. We live in a very distracted society. Our attention spam is going down like, like never before. And everyone's distracted, especially with phones. It's very likely that you're watching this on a mobile device. Think about this. Maybe you've been through situations like this. You, you're leaving for work and you're running late and you're stressed because you're gonna get late, you're gonna have to report that lateness. But we barely notice if we skip our devotional, for example, because we're distracted with the wrong things. We started to change priorities. You know, we prioritize the least important things and we forget the most important things. I think it's a, it's a sequence. After, you, after you've been distracted for too long, things start to get distorted in your mind. The reality, 
starts to get distorted in your mind. It's not uncommon to find Christian people justifying the wrong behavior using Bible text out of context because things got distorted. In their minds, things are not going right. We, we're living in a time where everything is relative. You know, it's my truth, it's your truth. Relativism is on the high of all time and things are distorted. We, we don't know what's right and what's wrong. And to be honest, man, it's really, really confusing. All of that is because we have chosen to isolate ourselves and because of that, we are without protection. We are actually very vulnerable, fragile. You know, it's the strategy of the enemy to isolate us. If you go to the military, for example, the military has this strategy. It's isolate to infiltrate. It's much easier to infiltrate an army that's isolated. And I feel like this is what the devil has done to the church. Our army has been spread so thin that it's easy to infiltrate. This is what's happening with us. So you get distracted, you start modeling your life after the wrong people, you look up to wrong models instead of looking up to Jesus, things get distorted in your mind, the reality and the truth is not absolute anymore, and if you're left there for so long, you know what's gonna happen? Destruction is gonna set in. And, and the reason why I mentioned destruction, and I don't want to point any fingers here, but it's easier to notice destruction setting in in families where people deal with alcoholism or drug problems. And again, I'm not pointing any fingers. I've been there. I know how it feels. But it's, it's obvious when we look that destruction has set in. Most people will act surprised. They think it's overnight. What happened? What have I done? What, what did I do wrong? But the reality is it took years. It was that kid in school that was bullied, chose to isolate himself. No one noticed. A long time goes by. Next thing you know, tragedy. Drugs, problems with family, and unfortunately, so many suicide cases because of isolation. Destruction sets in pretty easy if we don't pay attention to isolation. Now, like I told you in the beginning, I think this book that was written thousands of years ago actually has the solution. And I don't mean to be religious or anything like that, but there was a very wise guy who wrote an account in the middle of this book. It's called the Book of Acts. His name was Luke. He was writing the story of the church. And I think, I, I really believe that the church in the beginning of the history of the church actually had the solution. No one was isolated. No one was by themselves. They had no needs. When you open this little book called the Book of Acts, in the second chapter, they tell, Luke tells this story that the church, they would devote themselves to four things. If you don't want to get distracted, if you don't want things to get distorted, and if you don't want destruction to set in, you have to find time, a place, and accommodate this in your life. You have to devote yourself. And I think these four things to be devoted to, they're pretty good. They were the teaching of the apostles. They were talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They were talking about hope. They were talking about a future. They weren't really concerned with the things of the world. As a matter of fact, this was a common saying at the time. Don't pay attention to the things of the world. Look up. Look to the skies where my help come from. That's, that's what they were doing. They were devoting themselves to the teaching of the apostles. And then they were devoting themselves to fellowship, which is great. I'm going to talk about this very briefly. And then they were devoting themselves to eating together. You know, we, we call that communion. They were just sharing a meal together. I'm Brazilian. I have barbecues in my house pretty much every week, twice, three times a week. <laughs> and devoting ourselves to eating together, it's a great thing. And then last but not least, they devoted themselves to prayer. So today, to close our session, I just want to talk about these two things. First, fellowship. Most of us don't really value our friends. We, we don't know who our friends are. You know, the Bible is very peculiar about our friends. Some friends are closer than brothers. The advice of a real friend is really valuable. And, it, you know, a real friend is born during adversities. The Bible is really clear about our friends. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future. But for some reason, we neglect to hang around the right people. And we, we're inclined to hang out with the wrong people. And most of us will pay the consequences later on. Pay attention to your friends. That word fellowship means intimacy. The church in the beginning, they were devoted to have intimacy with one another. And you know what? I tell, I tell people that live around me in my church, in my workplace, and everywhere I go, if I'm going through a problem and you don't know, there are two people at fault. The first one is me. The second one is you. 
Because if you don't know that I'm going through a problem, yes, maybe I haven't shared, but you haven't been poking in my business enough. And you're supposed to poke in my business so you can know what's going wrong. You're supposed to know that automatically. Fellowship is really, really important. We need to hang out with the right people, but we need to be intentionally devoted to fellowship. We need to carve out time. In our Western society, we isolate it too much. But second, I want to talk about devotion. What devotion really means. A lot of us think that devotion is just like, you know what, I'm going to put some time aside so I can do my devotional. Unfortunately, the words are very similar, but that's not what it means. The word devotion here means dedication for life. They made their, their lives purpose. They couldn't wait. They would wake up in the morning and the first thing that they would think about was, how am I going to hang out with my people? Where am I, where am I going to sit down to eat? How are we going to talk about the teachings of Jesus Christ? They made the reason for their being alive these four things. Devotion. The solution for isolation is being devoted to go against isolation, which is fellowship. I, I, I have a saying, it's pretty funny. <laughs> You're probably only gonna understand if you put it in writing on the screen, but I'm Brazilian, I have a license to use the words in the wrong way <laughs> when it comes to English. But the saying is this, our witness will improve our witness. Our witness will improve our witness. We're supposed to be witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So my encouragement to you today, it's not religious. I don't, I don't want you to turn into a very religious person. I just want to encourage you to find good friends and hang out with them for long enough and devote yourselves to one another and devote yourselves to God with good teaching, fellowship, eating together and praying together. If you do that, I can guarantee you you will never face the consequences of isolation. I hope you'll find good friends today. God bless. See? Done.